Welcome to the magical world of systems of ODEs. Those are equations that depend not only on themselves, but also on each other. And an example would be, for instance, you have two functions, x1 and x2, where the derivative of the first function is seven times itself, so far so good, but also minus three times the other one. And on the other hand, the derivative of the second function is 10 times the first one minus four times itself. Where again, x1 and x2 are functions of time. So x2, x2 is x2 of t. Okay. Think, for instance, particles colliding with each other, like the sun and the moon, or just two quantities interacting with each other. So x1, the behavior of x1 depends on x2, and the behavior of x2 depends on x1. So in some sense, those two functions are coupled together and really our goal is to disentangle them. Now, systems of ODEs arise in many fields such as astrophysics, ecology, or chemistry. And in fact, it should come to no surprise that even my PhD thesis involved a system of differential equations. In fact, that is the first application I want to talk about. So I'll cover three quick applications here. One is about chemical reactions. By the way, there is a YouTube video covering you know, my thesis work in more detail. It's attached to the lecture notes. Now, consider the following chemical reaction. Very simple, where a particle A or molecule A turns into B and vice versa. Think, for instance, A being a molecule or a protein that twists to become another molecule B. So already I want to say C plus O2 is CO2. It's too complicated for us. We're really considering A and B are two different states of the same molecule. Two different states of the same molecule. Then what you can do, you can measure the concentration of both A and B, and that's what we call X1 and X2. So if x1 of t is a concentration of a at t, then time t and x2 of t is a concentration of b at t, then the chemical reaction can be modeled by the following system of differential equations. So then the reaction is modeled by what's called a system of reaction diffusion equations, which says the following, and I will explain, the derivative of A is B minus A. So the other molecule minus the original one and the derivative of B or the rate of change in the concentration of B is A minus B. So you see, this is a system of differential equations because everything is coupled here. And as I mentioned, this is called a reaction diffusion system. Diffusion system. 
And I want to explain why this makes sense, because it's quite an esoteric system. And intuitively, what is this saying? Suppose you have a compound with a lot of A molecules and just a tiny bit of B molecules. And the question is, what is the system saying in terms of the reaction? So if you have such a compound, then there's more A than B. So X1 of T is bigger than X2 of T. And so the differential equation is saying, how does A evolve? So how does the concentration of A involve? Well, X1 prime by the ODE becomes X2 minus X1, which if there's more A than B, then B minus A is negative. So this whole thing would be negative in this case. And so X1 prime is negative, and therefore this causes x1 to decrease. Or in other words, if we have this compound where there's lots of A and not that much B, then what happens is the concentration of A decreases. And similarly, if you use x2 prime, You know, X2 prime becomes positive and B increases until you get equilibrium. Equilibrium. Meaning that in the end, you should roughly get half A, half B. So, Hopefully this makes a little bit more sense in terms of what is actually happening. And what I like about this is it really motivates systems of differential equations quite nicely because you can see in the above example, X1 and X2 are really coupled together because A reacts with B and B reacts with A and vice versa. And this is a bit disentangling that. The second equation I wanted to talk about, or the second application, is a fancier version of the mass spring equation called the mass spring system. System, where in this case, you don't just have one mass, related to one spring, but two masses coupled together. So this is M1, maybe this is the first spring with K1, but then M1 is attached to another spring and another mass M2, and then actually a third spring. Think like a bottom one, right? And we wanna figure out how do things move? Then what you can measure are precisely the displacements of M1 and M2. Again, you don't need to know how to derive those equations. That's just an example. But it turns out you can model the behavior of the two masses with the following system then the displacements means x1, x1 of t and x2 of t are modeled by the following system. So same as before, I think Newton's second law, M1 X1 double prime of T is 
minus the spring constants. So K1 plus K2, X1 of T plus K2, X2 of T plus an external force, I think F1 of T, and similarly, M2, X2 double prime of T is K2, X1 of T minus K2 plus K3, X2 of T plus another force. And I know this looks extremely complicated, but I really want you to compare it with the previous equation we had, where it was mass times x1, x double prime equals to something depending on x and the force. And by the way, what's cool about this is, well, m1 depends on the neighbors k1 and k2, which you see here, and the second mass depends on the neighbors k2 and k3, which you can see here. And in fact, I want to um, show you a little demo now, but I do want to mention just one little thing. Because of those forces F1 and F2, this becomes an example of an inhomogeneous system. System. And now, in fact, let me show you two quick demos. So the first thing I wanted to show you is those two masses on the three springs. Here it's a bit horizontal, but same thing, where now you can see them interacting with each other. There we go. And all this is modeled by this a system of uh, differential equations. Another thing I want to show you is we talked at the beginning of the course about the double pendulum or oh, sorry, the single pendulum. And it turns out there's a double pendulum version of this where you have two weights on a pendulum that just swing like crazy like that. And in fact, interestingly enough, this is one of the first examples of a chaotic system. So it turns out they behave very chaotically here. Okay, last but not least, I wanna show you the last application. All right. And with this, I would like to welcome you to our third application, which I think is the coolest. And with this, I would like to welcome you to Pokemon Stadium. So let's model a Pokemon battle using systems of differential equations. So in this case, what we have, we have Pikachu, um, fighting against Charmander. And in particular, we can model what are called the hit points of Charmander and Pikachu. So let X1 of T be the hit points of Charmander. Here, at time T and X2 of T be the hit points of Pikachu at T. Now, hit points, what this means is think life. So maybe each Pokemon starts with 100 hit points and it takes damage. And once um, the hit points become zero, that's when the Pokemon loses, basically. Yeah. Then it turns out one possible battle Possible battle is given by, it's giving the following x1 prime is 16x1 minus 35x2 and x2 prime is 6x1 minus 13x2. And I like this very much because it really shows how versatile systems of differential equations are because it turns out we can interpret 
each of those numbers in terms of our battle. So it's a really great way of motivating systems of differential equations. Because here is what those numbers mean concretely. So remember, x1 prime measures how the life of Charmander changes. So here we say somehow the rate of change of Charmander is positively influenced by itself. So Charmander does something to itself to increase its hit points, and that is healing. So 16x1 of t means Charmander uses healing. So that's one component. On the other hand, it gets some negative effect from Pikachu. See, it decreases, minus 35x2, and that is damage from Pikachu. It's like Pikachu body slams. from Pikachu. And then, so that was on the Charmander side. Now let's look at the Pikachu side. So Pikachu somehow gets positively influenced by Charmander. So the stronger Charmander is, somehow Pikachu gets more hit points and that's stealing hit points. So six X one of T. So Pikachu steals hit points from Charmander. And then finally, what is this minus 13 X2 of T? So it depends on Pikachu and somehow negatively affects Pikachu. And that is when Pikachu loses its own hit points, for instance, by electrocuting himself. Itself. So Pikachu electrocutes itself. I know it has the word cute in it, but it's not a cute scenario. And in fact, if you solve this system, which we can do in a couple of lectures, you can actually show that Charmander loses quickly. quickly. In fact, I want to show you a little picture of this. So in the end, Charmander is sad. Come on, poor little thing. And by the way, one other thing here, we have a two by two system. We have two characters competing against each other, but there's also this game called Super Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers, which is eight characters fighting against themselves. That would be an eight by eight system of ODEs. Now, this ends our introduction to systems of ODEs with all its applications. And now let's see how we can try solving them.